The Federal Reserve has taken an unprecedented series of actions stemming from the financial crisis of 2008. Now with nearly full employment and continued steady growth, the Fed has begun to raise the policy rate. But with over $2 trillion in excess reserves, this time the Fed's approach will be different. To understand how the Fed's approach will be different, we need to understand the two main differences from prior hiking cycles. The first difference is the size of the Fed's balance sheet. In the chart, we can see excess reserves grow from zero to over 2.5 trillion following three rounds of quantitative easing. The Fed has not tightened monetary policy with this quantity of excess reserves since the Great Depression. The second difference is interest paid on reserves, which the Fed did not pay before 2009. Now, by raising the policy rate, the Fed also raises the amount of interest it must pay on reserves. In the chart, we can see the Fed's estimate of those payments. Currently, each 1% increase in the policy rate will require 20 to 25 billion in additional payments to banks and money market funds. And the bottom line? The Fed estimates it will transfer over $250 billion by 2022. This enormous transfer of money presents significant operational, legal, and political hurdles. Based on these two differences from historical tightening cycles, we believe a key mechanism for tightening monetary policy will be reducing the size of the Fed's balance sheet and not just raising the policy rate. Reducing the size of its balance sheet should cause long-term interest rates to rise, but will lessen the need for the Fed to pay additional interest to banks. As a result, investors may want to speak with their financial advisors about considering positions that reduce exposure to long-term interest rates.